breaking news. A family of four hit by an SUV and the mother has now died. The CBS 2 News team is here and we begin with that Irvine tragedy. The accident happened at Turtle Rock and Ridgeline Drives and CBS 2's Rachel Kim is there live with new information of this horrific crash. Rachel. Yeah, Pat, so incredibly sad. A mother has been killed and her family is now in the hospital recovering after that terrible crash that happened just up the road here. Irvine police say the family was walking on Ridgeline around 8 tonight when an SUV veered out of control, jumped the curb, hit the family, then went over the side into some bushes. We're told the four victims are the mother, the father, a female teen, and a male teen. Three of them were taken to the hospital by ground. The father was airlifted out after being pinned beneath the car. The woman was pronounced dead just after 9 p.m. The three others are now in serious condition. Now, we just got an update from Irvine police say they say that the driver of the SUV, 37-year-old Amal Ato of Irvine, has been arrested for DUI. It's not clear right now if it was alcohol or drugs, but he has been arrested. He's still being treated for his injuries at the hospital. A short time ago, witnesses described to us what they saw. The little girl was injured or had a head injury and the mother was off in the bushes. They were still trying to get to her and it took a while for everything to kind of come together and the rescue people to come and the police and everyone else. There was a gentleman stuck under the car and there was another teenager boy uh, who was uh, kind of sh in shock but he had some problems also. You can see police still have Ridgeline Road closed off here as they continue their investigation. So just to reiterate, the driver of the SUV has been arrested for DUI. The mother of the family has been killed. The three other family members are now in the hospital. Back to you in the studio, Pat. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Well, tonight, outrage at a local Starbucks after a customer received his drink with a racial slur on it. It happened at the Starbucks at La Cunada Flintridge and CBS 2's Chris Holmstrom joins us live now. Chris. Yeah, Pat, it happened at this Starbucks you see right behind me. It was Tuesday morning and people who live in this area, they tell me they are outraged by what happened. Miguel Acosta defending his friend after learning he received this drink from the La Cunada Flintridge Starbucks. On the label, a racial slur toward Latinos. His co worker helps translate. Yesterday, went to Starbucks and they asked for his name, and his name is Peter, and they wrote this beaner. Um, and he's saying that it's not fair. Miguel says his friend didn't deserve this and doesn't understand why he was targeted. Um, for everything that's happening, and his friend's really sad right now with everything that's going through. So it's really hard. People living nearby also in disbelief. I'm shocked. I go to that Starbucks almost every day. At Starbucks, customers I spoke with had no idea. And I guess it brings back a lot of discrimination. It brings back a lot of old, you know, growth that we should have had before. This incident comes one month after a black man at a Torrance Starbucks claims he was denied access to a bathroom. And in Philadelphia, two black men were arrested after waiting for a business meeting at a Starbucks. And now, racist remarks on cups. The company released this statement saying, this is not indicative of the type of experience we want our customers to have when they walk into our stores. We have apologized to the customer directly and are working to make things right. And Starbucks says they are investigating this case, and because of incidents like these ones, they are holding a racial bias training later this month, and stores all across the country will shut down. Pat, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Yes, it's a black pickup truck, airbags deployed, he has it's multiple steamer. tires. A wild hit and run driver caught on cell phone video putting lives in danger tonight. The terrifying ordeal lasting nearly 15 minutes. CBS 2's Peter Dowd is live in Santa Monica where it all happened. Peter. Pat, right now, police just left the scene here in Santa Monica. This is the intersection of 14th and Olympic where this dangerous situation came to a crashing end. But before it did, a stunned driver recorded what was unfolding on his cell phone. Check it out. I we're following a hit and run driver. He's uh, crashing into vehicles. We're told the driver of this pickup may have been under the influence when he suddenly crashed into several vehicles. 
This all began in Venice around 7 tonight, but the driver kept going and for more than 15 minutes crisscrossing streets in Venice and Santa Monica. At one point, an ambulance even began to follow him. A stunned witness driving behind him called 911 and then actually began to follow him. Meanwhile, that witness's passenger was recording on his cell phone. What was going through your mind during all this? I was hoping that he would not kill somebody because his left front tire was completely off. He was on the rim. Uh, his car had heavy damage. It was airbag deployed. I was surprised that he was actually able to make it around for 15 minutes and, you know, his car didn't catch on fire. There was smoke everywhere. Um, so I was surprised that he didn't get killed and no one else got, you know, badly injured. And that witness says it all came to an end when the driver finally crashed into the median at 14th and Olympic. The witness says he saw a prescription bottle fall out of the truck. Back out here live again, this all came to an end here at the intersection of 14th and Olympic. We're told the driver was arrested, but incredibly, no injuries were reported. Pat. That is incredible. Thank you, Peter. Well, Calabasas is known as the home of celebrities, but now it's also the site of a murder mystery. A passerby found the body of a man lying in a ditch on Las Virginas Canyon Road just before noon today. He was wearing only underwear. Now, detectives say it's not clear if he died at the scene or was killed and then dumped there. They're asking anyone with information to come forward. Tonight, federal agents are swarming a Long Beach home looking for clues in the bombing that killed an Orange County spa owner. The investigation is now focusing on the woman's business partner. And CBS 2 Stacy Butler is live in Long Beach with new information about that man. Stacy. Yeah, Pat, earlier federal agents already searched two different homes in Orange County tonight. They're still here. They've been here all day at this Long Beach home. Uh, the FBI is not naming a suspect, but the neighbors out here tell us that the guy who lives here has rocket fuel in his garage. He used to make rockets that are about as big as I am. You know, so he'd do it right here in, in the driveway by his garage. So, and he'd go out to the desert. Longtime neighbor Mushroom Montoya says Stephen Beal, the man whose home is now surrounded by federal agents, was a friendly man known in the neighborhood for making rockets. But now, as new details emerge about the bombing of his business partner and alleged former girlfriend, Ildiko Craniac, Beal is under the spotlight. He told us that, that he was involved with her financially and he was helping her out. Tonight, federal agents loaded boxes of evidence from Beale's garage. He still hasn't been named as a suspect in the death of the 48-year-old esthetician who was killed when a bomb exploded in her Aliso Viejo day spa Wednesday afternoon. Sheriffs announced the bombing was deliberate, and they say it was not sent through the Postal Service. Security tape early this morning shows federal investigators rolling up in front of this home in Tribuco Canyon, where Craniac lived with her mom and estranged husband. In Long Beach, earlier today, ATF agents removed a gun along with evidence from her alleged boyfriend Beale's home. Tonight we're learning more about Craniac's financial woes. As neighbors say, she traveled the world, some countries, with Beale. According to state records, Beale was the secretary and CFO of Craniac's corporation, a corporation that was formed when Craniac and her husband were going through Chapter 13 bankruptcy. It was closed and dismissed the day before the bombing. So for now, it remains a mystery. Still no suspects and no motive. We did try to speak with the Craniac family and also the family of her estranged husband. Both refused to go on camera. That's the latest from Long Beach. Pat, back to you. Thank you, Stacy. A Northridge homeowner is able to scare off would-be burglars even though she wasn't home. The men were seen jumping over a fence and peering in the back of the house. Then the homeowner starts talking to them through the security camera system. Hello? Oh, okay. See you guys. I see you guys. They ran off and didn't break in or take anything. The suspects are still on the loose. Now, President Trump escalated his fight with California tonight over immigration and sanctuary status. And CBS2 political reporter Dave Bryan is here with the president's comments, including some where he called some immigrants quote, animals? Yeah, pretty strong language, actually. And you can see the war between California and the Trump administration is back on again. Mm -hmm. Some critics charge this may be a convenient way to change the subject from what could be the humiliation of watching the North Korea summit possibly falling apart before it even got off the ground. In any case, President Trump definitely turned up the heat on the immigration issue, blaming immigrant criminals for a crime wave and California for protecting them. 
We cannot let this butchery happen in America. The state of California's attempts to nullify federal law have sparked a rebellion. President Trump at the White House Wednesday thanked and congratulated 16 Republican local and county leaders from Orange County and the Inland Empire, who he says are leading the revolt against California's sanctuary state law, a law he says that protects violent criminals. These are people. These are animals. The new law, the California Values Act, does prohibit local law agencies from holding many immigrants in jail who could be deported for federal immigration agents. But the law does allow illegal immigrant inmates who have been charged with violent crimes to be handed over to federal immigration agencies. Hundreds of violent crimes are included in that category. There's a silent majority of patriots out there, and then anyone with common sense knows this uh, California Values Act was put in place to protect those that are here breaking the law. The sanctuary state law was written by California State Senate President Pro Tem Kevin DeLeon. For those politicians, uh, all Republican, uh, who attended this meeting uh, in the White House, uh, I feel like they have betrayed our values. They have betrayed their home state. And Governor Jerry Brown tweeted out his fury at President Trump's attacks on undocumented immigrants, accusing the president of lying on immigration, lying about crime, and lying about the laws of California. The governor saying flying in a dozen Republican politicians to flatter him and praise his reckless policies changes nothing. Pat, back to you. All right, thanks for that, Dave. Now, the hunt continues tonight for a driver involved in a suspected street racing crash that killed two little boys coming home from school with their big brother. CBS 2's Tina Patel is live in Mead Valley near Paris, where she talked to devastated family members tonight. Yeah, Pat, so much grief in this community, but also, as you said, so much frustration that the other driver involved in this alleged street racing is still on the loose. The Gonzalez family is leaning on their faith and each other in this time of unimaginable grief. Six-year-old Dominic and eight-year-old Antonio were killed Tuesday evening when an alleged street racer crashed into them as their older brother Luis was driving them home from school. That they're sweet little boys and that they had their whole lives ahead of them and they should have lived longer. The accident happened just down the street from the family home. CHP says the boys were wearing seatbelts, but the Honda that slammed into them was going at a high speed and the impact was too great. Because of the incline of the road, it's possible the drivers didn't see each other until the last second. It's a blind spot. It's a blind spot. Like, I really don't come down this street because of that blind spot. Rochelle Kelly says this crash has shaken their entire neighborhood. And even though they're glad the driver of the Honda, 27-year-old Richard Zuniga, is facing two counts of murder, they say they won't feel safe until the driver of the black Altima, also involved in the street racing, is caught. Being that they're still out there, it's, a, it's still a problem because no one knows who they are. I think there should be justice for what happened. It wasn't fair that that they had, they had no fault in it whatsoever. Now, the family is originally from Guatemala, and the family is planning on taking the bodies of the boys back there. They want to th show their appreciation to everyone who has reached out to them and helped with their fundraising for the funeral cost. We'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Tina. Now, hundreds of students and employees are being urged to get tested for tuberculosis at Riverside City College. The school says that because a student is being treated for an active case of the disease, the college says students can get tested for free at a community health clinic. Now, the royal wedding of Prince Harry to Meghan Markle is just three days away, and the family drama continues. CBS 2's Crystal Cruz is live in Windsor. Good morning, Crystal. Love your chapeau, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. It is absolutely beautiful here in Windsor. Behind me, the castle up there, St. George's Chapel. Everyone giddy, excited for the big day. But you know what? Everyone is talking about family problems, family drama. This newspaper right here says Meghan Markle's dad alone, ill, and afraid. While the choir is warming up for the royal wedding of Meghan and Harry this Saturday, royal faces are in windows on flags and even frothed on cappuccinos along the route to Windsor. 
Meghan Markle's father tells TMZ he will not be able to walk his daughter down the aisle Saturday after undergoing surgery this morning to add three stents following a heart attack. TMZ is also reporting that Meghan's half-sister, Samantha Markle, who is not invited to the wedding, had a run-in with paparazzi in Florida that left her with a broken ankle and fractured knee. An extraordinary amount of drama just a few days before Harry and Meghan's big day. Royal correspondent Roya Nika predicts Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, will walk her down the aisle. Meanwhile, Kensington Palace announced Prince George and Princess Charlotte will serve as bridesmaids and page boys in the wedding party. Most of the weddings here in England, they have children rather than the bridesmaids and grooms that we have in America. The palace says Meghan will not have a maid of honor because she didn't want to choose among her close friends. You called out to our country. And according to TMZ, Elton John, a close friend of Princess Diana's and the royal family, will perform on their special day. And Windsor will lock down today for part of the rehearsal. 100,000 people expected to come out here for the big day. Security really tight. I am going to head down towards the castle, have a look around, see who's out there today. It's going to be a great day and a great weekend, Pat. All right, and you are looking great yourself, Crystal. We can't wait to see all of your reports. Thanks for that. And you, please stay tuned for Royal Wedding coverage on CBS2. Our Crystal Cruise, as we mentioned, will keep bringing us reports from London all week ahead of the big day on Saturday. And CBS is out with its new fall lineup, and the cast of Murphy Brown is celebrating the return of the series. You missed us. You know you did. It's so great to have the gang back together. And it's wonderful. The show will to hear air so on Wednesdays, and Jay Hernandez revs up the new version of Magnum P.I., taking over the iconic role from Tom Selleck. There are also two new comedies. Cedric the Entertainer stars in the neighborhood. He lives proudly in a black neighborhood in LA when a white family from the Midwest moves in next door. Hi, I'm Gemma, and this is our son, Grover. Grover? <laughs> Grover Johnson? You know, to me, this character is kind of like half Archie Bunker, half George Jefferson. Well, there's also Happy Together, a comedy about a young pop star who unexpectedly moves in with a suburban couple. That's on Sunday nights. Also that night, the drama God Friended Me. It's about an atheist who gets a friend request from God. And from the team behind Law & Order comes the new drama FBI. You can find out more about the shows and the schedules on CBSLA.com under Scene on TV. And, of course, Garth and I will be back in shape in fall. Yeah, she's ready some good for stuff coming back. Murphy Brown, that'd be interesting to see. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. it's good. Hey, what's old is new again, right? That's absolutely. All we right, should everybody. know, right? Yep, we well, should. At least I should. All right, everybody, let's get to it because we have a lot going on this evening. So, tell you what's happened. It's been a nice day today. Temperature wise, right now things are settling down. I don't think we're going to get a lot of cloud action in here again tonight. We might pick up a little bit. Lancaster, good evening. 59 degrees for you up into the high deserts. 61 in the San Bernardino. So, it's right where we were last night. We made it up to 75 today. That is a degree above where we were. We're still picking up some of these onshore winds. The strongest winds I can show you right now up to the north wind advisory through early tomorrow morning. If you're heading up to Santa Barbara before about 3 a.m., you're going to run into that from the coast all the way up into the Goleta area as the high pressure area uh, is still offshore. The low continues to move in. This one that was offshore yesterday continues to move in. We'll see how much cloud cover we get. We've been obliterated on the uh, uh, inversion, the upper air not being as warm as it could be, and that's why we're not seeing a lot of marine layer. But boy, look at this. By Saturday, high pressure starts to move into the area. And then the beginning of next week, we'll start to deal with another area of low pressure. So some low clouds tonight, 55 degrees, fairly quiet forecast. We like that in the weather department. 67, downtown 71, the valley 75 for the IE. Not much of a change. We'll bump up Saturday and Sunday, put us back to normal. All in all, it looks nice. We'll be on there bright and early tomorrow at 430. Have all the latest for you, Pat. All right, thanks, Garth. Uh, now to breaking news. A kidnapping in Paramount in Stu Mandel is overhead in Sky 2 with the latest. Stu. Well, Pat, a two-year-old child in a car that has been stolen happening out here in the Paramount area. You can see some of the sheriffs down there talking to a very distraught mother. They're actually at the Paramount Civic Center right here by the City Hall area. Now, the, how this whole thing happened, still a little, a little sketchy, might have something to do with a domestic dispute type of situation. Right now, those sheriffs do know that this car is missing. The two-year-old in the back seat, 
and the driver may not be known to the mother. Live in Sky 2 over Paramount, I'm Stu Mandel. Back to you in the studio. All right, uh, thank you. We hope that has a good ending there, uh, Stu. Well, the little girl who's built up a huge social media following by cursing and throwing around cash may have gotten her mother fired. That's ahead. Plus, how a 25-year-old lied about Hurricane Harvey to pose as a high schooler. And the Angels try to take two of three from the Houston Astros. Jim Hill has the details later in sports. And here's a look at the guests tonight on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. And the Disneyland Resort is hosting Pixar Fest. Be sure to watch CBS 2 News from 4.30 to 7 tomorrow morning. We'll reveal your secret code word so you can enter to win a four-pack of tickets.